This is a real twist, Lovely. isn't it? You, you've been... Was it 21 years since you signed? Yeah, since I signed my first deal, yeah, when I was 18. So, I mean, you, you were well overdue a greatest hit, mm -hmm. but rather than do the normal greatest hits, this, so this is new vocals and entirely new treatment of all the hits. Yeah, exactly, and I think... Um, there have been some talk about doing greatest hits for a while, but I felt like doing a sort of traditional one was completely pointless, really, because everybody can access music however they want, whenever yeah. they want. So I thought, if I'm going to do it, I want it to be different for the people that um, want to hear it. But also for me, it's really nice to revisit things and going back in the studio with putting the cans back on and seeing something like Murder on the Dance Floor or Groove Jet again and thinking, OK, what do I want to bring to it and how can I make it mm -hmm. a bit different? And, yeah. Yeah, and how lovely. special, what a way to do it with a live orchestra. Oh, I've been in my element because we've been doing the stuff in the studio with the live orchestra and then on tour, we're taking it with the band as well, so we do make it into live disco, like sort of 70s oh. Philadelphia strings. Uh, yeah, it's just been... I've been having a ball, basically. Well, just be, <laughs> being there with them all, because they're all so incredibly talented, mm -hmm. and you look yeah. at it all happening and think, oh, my God, this is clever. Yeah. I can remember when I did the, the theatre for the first time and sang with the orchestra, mm. met them all for the first time, and it was in a big rehearsal room, and they struck up. And I had, to, I had to stop. Goosebumps. Because I said, hang on a second, hang on a second. This is so beautiful. I didn't want to spoil it by <laughs> singing. Oh, no, I feel exactly the same so... way. <laughs> exactly the same way. Um, but actually, when it came to the gig, people were saying, oh, I did my first show with it at um, the Royal Festival Hall in October. And people were saying, are you really nervous? Because I had like, 40 musicians on stage. And I'm like, actually, I feel really relaxed. Are you taking them all with you? Are you doing the full thing? Yeah, yeah, we'll do it with the, with the orchestra. I mean, the, the first show we've done was about 40 musicians. I think for the tour, it's more like sort of 20, 25. That's still quite a lot that's of people. A, that's a lot of people to <laughs> yeah. take on the road with you, isn't it? Yeah, nice. but it's, you, you've got to do it properly. There's no point. That's the whole thing with the orchestral stuff. It's like there's always an extra level, and I kept you, pushing it. Yeah, you can't cut back on that. You, you really can't. Can't. You need You need the whole crew with you, <laughs> yeah. for sure. Well, the, uh, the album is, uh, is out on the 15th of March, mm -hmm. um, and it, that's not when it should have been out. <laughs> no. Um, it's going to be out in January, but um, I'm having a baby in January, so I thought it'd be nice if I was also around at the same time as the album to do the <laughs> promotion. And there was a, a, a very uh, amusing moment when the due date for my baby and the album was actually the same day. And I thought, um, I guess I'll just have to see which everyone comes out first and then prioritise that for a bit. <laughs> but uh, luckily... Everything has been taken care Schedule of. Schedule in at its finest. I, I would have thought with your team that must have been quite an interesting phone call. Everyone well, working towards the release date of the album, you go, hi, got something to tell you. I suppose the most ridiculous thing of all, someone said to me, oh, have your label been good to you about, about everything? And I said, well, actually, it's me. I do it myself. This is my third release on my own record label, so I don't really know how I managed to... It was either, like, a masterstroke of timing or, like, completely chaotic rubbish. Mm. I think it's probably the second one in <laughs> yeah, my life. But, absolutely. Um, I suppose with, with family stuff, I've always been a big believer that the timing's never going to be amazing anyway. So you Ever. might as well just get, get on with the chaos that is family life and trying to combine it with a silly day job anyway. So. Well, you've got four boys. I do. So um, that in itself, I would have thought, would mean that you were... Uh, a, this is no great surprise, you know what's going to happen, but do people still give you advice? Um, actually, I probably would quite like that. It's more a case of people going, oh, you know what you're doing now, it's fine. And I think, do oh, I? Ah. Yeah, exactly, do I? Um, and every new person that comes into the family changes the dynamic completely, doesn't mm -hmm. it, across the board in yes. every direction. So, so, no, I don't really feel like I've kind of got it down. I'm just, I'm really looking do forward to ever, meeting the baby. Do you ever, as a mum, do no. you ever, though? I think you embrace the fact that you don't know that much more, though. Mm. You're just a bit more relaxed about yeah. the fact that you're not going to get it right most mm. of the time, but your well, intentions are good. You said, um, <laughs> and it's quite interesting, actually, because it sparked a debate in our office yesterday, mm. that, um, that for you, as a working mum, people mm -hmm. say, you know, how do you manage to juggle? But, but your husband, you know, is working dad, but no-one ever asks him how he juggles. Nope. That's true, actually. Um, yeah, there's... Uh, I mean, I, in a lot of ways, I get it. There's a lot of shorthand conversation that gets made with people generally that's actually very personal questions, you know. Yeah. For women, it's often about when you're having babies, how Do you, you can want handle... Kids? Yeah, exactly, yeah. all that mm. kind of thing. And I think, I think it's more just sometimes it's quite healthy to step back and think, why is that, com you know, that conversation happening yeah. at all? And, yeah, I've said to Richard, Do you ever get asked about who's looking after the kids while you're on the road? And he's like, absolutely not, they just... So they just assume it's me. People say, so how do you do it all? How do you find the time? Yeah, and, the, and, it's, and actually the truth is the, 
the answer is normally quite boring. It's like every working parent, you know, you sort childcare, it, yeah. you? you know, you sort of look at your options and yeah. And, and it happens. <laughs> we're all just winging it. Like I said this morning, nice. we're, we're just trying Still to be do. the best parents we can be. Yeah, yes. We're all just winging Still it. Still do. Exactly. Um, and, uh, and I suppose, I mean, your mum's pretty hands on anyway, isn't she? Yeah, so she is. She lives 10 lovely. minutes from me. How is she? Nice. She's very good. Thank you for asking. Yeah. I loved the Blue Peter <laughs> 60th anniversary. Mm -hmm. um, that, was a, that was a great show. I and mean, how surreal. To, and you were there. I was there. She introduced you. I know. It was really, it's wow. the first time she's ever introduced me on something, actually. And uh, yeah, we had a lovely day out. and. Oh, yeah, it was very special. I mean, by the end of that day, though, I did feel like I didn't need to talk about Blue Peter for a while because it was kind of like <laughs> gorging on Blue Peter <laughs> for 24 hours with all the presenters there. But it was, I didn't realise it's the longest running TV programme anywhere in the world, actually. Yeah. Which is so impressive. special. And also, what's surreal is the fact that it, this is one of the studios that they use. I think I know, they were amazing. in here, which yeah. is really, really. Your mum would find it very bizarre. In yes, there. I think she would, actually. You still do, don't you? Every day yeah. it's weird driving in, yeah. She said she came day. one time for to film something here, and the uh, researcher, I think, was taking her around and said, Have you ever been here before? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> yes, once or twice. <laughs> So at Christmas, is, is it everyone round to yours? It is, yeah, yeah, absolutely, yeah. We ha we've been hosting Christmas for about the last 10 years now, I think. Mm. It's normally something like 14 or 16 mm. of us round the table. And you, you try and relax this year, though. Mm. <laughs> we can beat up a shot. little. Mm. But at least, you know, Christmas is lovely, isn't it? it Will is. you be spending <laughs> any of Christmas uh, Googling the lyrics to uh, any of your tracks? <laughs> <laughs> well, now that I've recorded all, that, yeah, you, are you referring to the fact that I sort of I realised I've been getting some of them wrong we for a little while? So, yeah. Take yeah. me home. You've mm. got, been getting wrong for seventeen years. Yeah, well, I think you just adapt <laughs> as you go along, and it's it was only really when I was going to argue with you. Well, this is the thing, and then before you know it, you just very confidently, uh, yeah. And then I went, and, went back in the studio. I thought I would better get them right, and I realised, yeah, there's whole sections I'd sort of left out for a while. And just, yeah, well, I can't can't crazy. wait to to hear the album Song Diaries <laughs> out on the fifteenth of uh, of March, and then the tour as we said it's an uh, eight show tour starts on june the 2nd and thank you very and much thank you, thank you.